everybody. Welcome to Nears Tavern. <laughs> they weren't sure if they needed to be happy to be at Nears. <laughs> Welcome to another wonderful gluten-free edition of Planet, <laughs> Planet Comedy TV. Where we can, <laughs> I, I need nine million more like you and I have a career. <laughs> this is a monthly showcase of uh, comedians from the New York City comedy scene and also comedy scenes from beyond the borders of New York State. It's a great show. I got a great lineup for you guys tonight. I'm already sweating like a freaking hooker on payday. <laughs> The mayor didn't like that joke. I'm worried about you, sir. <laughs> but yeah, no, we got a great show and stuff. And uh, you know, I, I usually just like start the shows. I never tell you guys a little bit about myself. I don't want to change that. We're doing a segment called Talking About Myself. <laughs> okay. All right, now, first, I'm not sure if you guys know, recently I became a grandfather. <laughs> You guys are clapping like, like I did something. I just showed up on the camera. I just... And that's what all grandparents do. We're just picture takers. That's all we do. I, I mean, the kid was around for five minutes and I already had like, 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 like two different folders already filled up with pictures of her. She was a new one with a cowboy hat. It was awesome, it was awesome. But I was a little scared about my daughter uh, raising a child. Because no, you gotta realize something. This was the same kid that whenever I would give her a doll when she was a kid, she would call them her baby. And then within about two days, their hair is all messed up, they're naked, they're on the floor, they have a little writing on them sometimes. Maybe the foot's missing. And I don't want to come to my daughter's house and see my grandkid on the floor with writing, the hair messed up. And you know, I don't want to see that. So I was a little scared, you know, so I started showing up like almost every day to make sure the kid ain't naked on the floor. <laughs> You don't know all her dolls, all her dolls. She didn't have a Barbie with a foot till she was about 10. <laughs> what kind of shit is that? I still think she's a little nuts. I don't know. It's just... But then something happened when my daughter became a mother for the first time. You ever see those first time parents? It's like they're scared of everything. As soon as I walked in, she's like, oh, hi, dad. You came to see the baby. Great Purell. Like, I got purell five times before I got to the freaking room. <laughs> I think I might be sterile now. <laughs> and it didn't even stop there. She already had covers on the, on, on the outlets and, and foam rubber around the edges of the table and the kid can't even roll over yet. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, first off, that's a whole big industry that, that, that whole child protection stuff. I mean, you even see it in the parks. I go with my granddaughter to the park. What happened to parks? I mean, really, remember we used to have slides that went up almost to the two stories? See, you young guys don't remember that. No, slides now. You know what I'm talking about. You climb up to the top and you can see Mrs. Rivera in her bedroom window. <laughs> Which is why we always had traffic on that particular slide. <laughs> We were the only slide with a traffic report. <laughs> oh, we have a backup at slide one over by Skull Street. Mrs. Rivera must be changing again. <laughs> nah, it's, you know, it's just like the slides are almost level now, man. You see a kid trying to go to the slide and they're scooching across like a dog on a carpet? <laughs> what kind of shit is that? And everything is soft. Everything is soft. Everything is rubber. It's like rubber padding everywhere. I saw a kid fall. Oh, just don't say here, mom. Just don't say it. Okay. I saw a kid fall. And he fell five times. He still had the nerve to cry. I mean, just one part of me just wanted to give him something to cry about. I said, as we go, not anymore. The crying bastard. And the monkey bars. All the monkey bars. When we were on the first off, you don't see monkey bars anymore. I don't think you can call them monkeys the bars. I don't know. They, you know, now they, they, they call them athletic bars. We don't want the children thinking they're animals because they, they got the fucking cookie monster eating fucking vegetables. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Ooh, broccoli. No! They're fucking cookies, you assholes. They're ruining everything. No. See, 
seesaws. You remember seesaws? Oh, yeah. Seesaw was a, you don't know, want to talk about seesaws, right? The, yeah. 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 The, 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 okay, that is your first, you don't see seesaws anymore, right? You, you know why? Because you see, that was the first life lesson that you got as a kid that you can't trust no fucking body. <laughs> you can't, you can, sooner or later, you're going to have a good time, okay? All of a sudden, you're going to wait till you're 15 feet up in the air. And then you're just going to roll up the shit. And then you're going to come down your ass. Boom. <laughs> Ladies, this hurt us a lot more than it hurt you. <laughs> My son was born with a high falsetto voice thanks to that, I think. But, it, <laughs> but it's messed up, man. It's just the whole thing with parks and child safety. We didn't need that. Did we have any of that stuff when we were kids? No, no you're here, right? Who's not here? The dumb kids. <laughs> That's why we didn't have any child safety stuff. It's called thinning up the herd. So why do to finish? Bringing your best to the table. You know what I'm saying? Sounds a little cruel. But look, when I was about maybe two years old, I put a fork in the outlet. <laughs> Life lesson. Don't fucking do that. That was the most important lesson I learned at that moment. <laughs> Never did it again. It's that dumb kid that goes back to see if it happens again. <laughs> That's the kid you don't want to fucking say. <laughs> I mean, look, it sounds cool, but think about it. If you look at a bottle of Clorox and you think, hmm, tasty refreshment, maybe procreation and long life isn't for you. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Mayor agrees with me, that's great. Okay. <laughs> I keep looking for his approval. I just keep looking for his approval. I voted for him. Yeah, well, I fucked up that thing. But anyway. <laughs> I don't do political humor. I just like making fun of assholes. Anyway. <laughs> kind of the same thing. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, but no. Kids are great. I was just kidding about that. Kids are great. Anybody here with kids? No, yeah, you all look happy. You all look happy. <laughs> I can tell that. They all, they all went. Didn't even answer that. No, no kids. <laughs> look at us. We look happy. We sleep. We just... <laughs> I get even with my kids now. Thanks to that great grandkid. You know that, right? It's the best, man. You kidding me? All those times, they'd be such a pain in the ass when they were small. Now I just sugar the kid up and send her back home. <laughs> Call her up at 11 o'clock say, hey, yeah, I'm going to go to bed now. You're not. <laughs> Look, that's what I do. Oh, man. Anyway, you guys ready to get the show started? Yeah! Oh, fuck you. The show started already. I was here. <laughs> All right. Up first, what can I tell you about this guy? Nothing, because he didn't tell me what he does. <laughs> the guy, believe it or not, is from my neighborhood. Williamsburg, am I right? Am I right? Hello? Yeah. That's right. We live in Williamsburg. That's right. Don't be too impressed. We were there back when the neighborhood was shitty. Uh, <laughs> but this guy, he does a regular weekly show right in my neighborhood that I'm going to be doing soon only because it's really, really fucking close. Please. <laughs> please welcome Mr. Derek Thompson. <laughs> Keep it going for Hector. Go. I thought the mic was on. This shit is not on. It's cool. We we'll talk loud. How y'all doing? Y'all yeah. yeah. sound drunk as shit. What? Who's drinking? Y'all, y'all, y'all drink, 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 drink. Yeah. I do that from time to time. You know, I used to be an alcoholic, but I slowed down a little bit. Now I'm just a friendly drunk. Wow. <laughs> I used to come to a place like this, get real drunk, shit faced right, and see a sexy girl at the bar. Want to say some cool shit like a player would. Well, you know, saying something retarded, like, nah, nah. <laughs> Can I suck your titty, baby? Yeah. <laughs> Not that one, the big one, the big one. <laughs> you know what it's about. It's like, yeah, one of mine's bigger than the other. <laughs> but you gotta love them both the same, right? Yeah. I call them the lopsided titties. I had a girlfriend with lopsided titties once. <laughs> she had a mosquito bite on one side and a regular titty on the other. <laughs> I love her. We just go out and eat, and I stuff tissue in the mosquito bite side. <laughs> Only because I'm a gentleman. I'm a gentleman. 
He's right, we live in the same neighborhood, but I'm originally from North Carolina, from the South. I was back down south a couple of weeks ago hanging out with my grandmother, which means I went to church. That's what she do all, that's what she do all her hanging out at. And yo, when I was in church, I'm like, damn, people are rude everywhere, yo. I stepped in the church. As soon as I got in the church, somebody farted right there in church. I'm like, this shit is sacrilegious. I'm trying to find out who it was. I looked up, it was the pastor. This nigga farted in the mic. He's like, this one smells like a hell. I'm like, oh. Oh shit, I gotta go to heaven. Did you know hell smells like the pastor's asshole? <laughs> Fucking ridiculous, man. Oh man, as you can see by my t-shirt, I smoke the marijuana. <laughs> Who else? I know you do. <laughs> my dream had a haircut since 1965. <laughs> He's like, I'm just gonna let it flow, I'm gonna let it flow. I'm gonna let it flow. We gotta legalize that shit, right? We gotta legalize that shit, right? Anybody agree? Yeah, legalize it. If you can drink alcohol legally, you should be get high on weed legally, right? It's not as dangerous. You ever drive home high? You might be going 5, 10, 15 miles below the speed limit, but to get your high ass home, it's all that matters. Driving drunk is a whole other adventure. It's like you're driving in cursing. You're like, oh shit. Why is the road moving? I don't know. Pull me another one. We party in. Party and weed don't give you a hangover. Hangovers are the worst. I'm getting older now, so my hangovers last like a whole day. You ever been so hang? You ever get a hangover where you gotta vomit and shit at the same time? <laughs> so you rush to the bathroom, but you fuck up and vomit in the toilet and shit in the trash can? <laughs> Piss off your roommate. Like, Yo, what the fuck, man? Who shit in the trash can? <laughs> Like, it was me, but like, don't judge me like we're not all degenerates in here. Last week you got fucked up and pissed on the couch, which is worse. I vote for piss on the couch. You can't do that. That's like uncivilized. Hell yeah. I ain't know they shot, they shot uh, good colors here. Oh shit. Oh, this is like, it's like historic. I was reading an article on the wall, man. Do you know Donald Trump dad used to fucking drink here? Donald Trump dad used to drink it. Read the article on the wall right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, he should have slipped and fallen and fell in the bathroom so Donald Trump be running for president right now. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> Who's up with Trump? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I finally got one. I always ask and nobody says anything. Like, <laughs> like somebody vote for this motherfucker. He's racking up votes. <laughs> I can't vote for a grown man that makes a duck face after he makes a point. <laughs> you want for president or is this Instagram, nigga? What are you doing? <laughs> he, we can't let him do it for the quick. <laughs> can't let him win. If he becomes president, he's gonna be a rock of kryptonite away from being Lex Luthor. We can't, we can't do this shit, it's all about Superman, right? It's either him or Hillary, what the fuck? It's like, either you vote for like, Constipation or diarrhea? What the fuck? Is that? <laughs> I guess I'll vote for constipation. <laughs> prostitution? Ain't nothing wrong with prostitution. That's a respectable profession. <laughs> I used to want to be a pimp. I used to want to be a pimp back in the day. You gotta read that book if you want to pimp. The only reason I ain't start pimping because you gotta you gotta come underneath the tutelage of an older pimp to become a pimp. I couldn't find one. <laughs> I had my pimp name and everything ready. My pimp name was gonna be Sugar Cookie. <laughs> sugar Cookie, motherfucker, Sugar Cookie. <laughs> I was gonna be the only rhyming pimp on the boulevard. Like, K double O K I E. <laughs> sugar Cookie, nigga, that's me. <laughs> I got all kinds of holes, different shapes, colors, and sizes. Oh. I got black holes, I got white holes, I got Asian holes with slanted eyes in. <laughs> eyes just ain't a word, but it rhymes, yo, so fuck it. <laughs> Since my name is Sugar Cookie, I was gonna get a Cadillac like pimps do, and it was gonna be tan with candy paint so it sparkles like a sugar cookie. <laughs> I had my plan mapped out. I was gonna name all my holes after cookies. But like, get over here, chocolate chip. <laughs> Where's my money, bitch? <laughs> Oreo, how the fuck you be black and white and make no money? <laughs> Get back out on that boulevard. 
Ah, uh, but it didn't happen, so I'm just a comedian. <laughs> Spending my day smoking weed. He's <laughs> with it. Yo, you kind of like Kenny Rogers. I would have thought you was him, but you're not passed out drunk right now. <laughs> oh, man, like when I get high, I like to write poetry. Because we have to think deeply. Mm -hmm. And I was going to write a poem about what's wrong with the world, but I ain't have enough paper or ink. <laughs> so I wrote a poem about chocolate chip cookies. I had the munchies like a motherfucker. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> what is this I see? <laughs> Goddamn. A bag of chocolate chip cookies. No, I didn't buy them. But I want to try them. They're not mine like a people princess. They are fine. Should I sit now? Will I? Won't I? <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, you know I ain't no cookies. With a glass of milk. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Chocolate chip. I got the Oreo. Crum, crum, crum. <laughs> On my lips. Somebody took this fucking man. <laughs> Yo, he sound like the kid in the bus, from, I mean, the kid in the class on the short bus. I was a Like Johnny with your man. Oh, man, God bless women. Y'all are the only reason this shit is civilized, because men ain't shit without y'all. And it's not our fault, men, right? It's, it's, it's the penis fault. He is crazy. Having a penis is like having a terrorist in your underwear that you got to talk down every day on the L train. <laughs> My penis make horrible suggestions on the L train. Like, nigga, grab them titties. I'm like, oh, slow down. That's a charge. <laughs> He's like, a charge? Are we tough enough for prison? I'm like, ain't no pussy in prison. He's like, you right, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fall back. Oh, man. Um, I'm a songwriter, too, y'all. I'm a, I'm a true artist. <laughs> y'all mind if I sing a song I wrote for y'all? All right, uh, this song I wrote in my mother's basement because it has great acoustics. <laughs> my, my bed and my PlayStation 4, I live there, don't judge me. <laughs> it's a love song. I was looking for a love song that, you know, I was looking for a group that didn't have a love song. So I was in the basement thinking, and I found a group that didn't have any love song at all. Men that beat their women have no love song at all. So I wrote a beautiful love song for all the women beaters out there. <laughs> it's entitled, Bitch Don't Run. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, bitch don't run. Thank you. <laughs> bitch, don't you run from me. I pay the rent here. That's it. <laughs> it's not a whole song, it's just a hook in more ways than one. You better run, girl, that nigga crazy. <laughs> that's a fucked up song, but if you put it on the radio, it'll be some dummy's favorite, right? Yes. Like, ooh, girl, that's my song. <laughs> what song are you talking about, bitch? I'm talking about Bitch Don't Run by Derek Thompson. It reminds me of Keith. He used to beat me every time the Giants lost. My eye hurt just reminiscing. I'm glad y'all laughing. Don't get me wrong. I don't, con I don't condone domestic violence. I think if you got a good woman, you should treat her like a queen. Ain't that right, ladies? Yes! yes. And as long as she treats you like a king and do whatever freaky shit you ask her to, like lick your balls. <laughs> yes. But don't ask her like a regular dude will. You ask her like a king would. You look her in the eye and you say, come forth hither <laughs> and lick it to my balls. <laughs> Thank you. You're the baddest bitch in all the land. I like y'all, y'all down with your ball licking. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, you gotta spread that joy. Oh, man, I'm trying to grow up, man, but yeah, I just do immature shit, yo. Anybody else over 30 doing immature shit all the time? It's, it's just, it's just, I just, I'm just silly, man. I like, I like to dance naked in the mirror after I take a shower. Who else? <laughs> just me? What, what's, what's your go-to move, Hector? <laughs> ah, I like that shit. <laughs> it's kind of for a topic. She's like, yeah. <laughs> Me? 
I just do this. I'm like, yeah. I call it the dick flop. I call it the dick flop because my dick be flopping. <laughs> and the other day it was good to me. I was like, yo, I got to write a song for this shit. I need some lyrics. <laughs> so I wrote a song. Step from the back, baby. I talk through the front. Uh-huh. All the prick that bitches. They want to see my junk. Ow. It is the meanest. <laughs> Also the cleanest, if it ain't and no. I'm talking about my penis, ow. I don't give that fair. No metro card, only call you up when my dick is hot, ow. That's all I got. Uh, my, my favorite lyric in that song is ow. Unexplanatory, uh, it just makes me feel good. Ow. Oh man, you know what? Y'all have been dope. I'm about to get off stage because I'm sweating. And I don't want to dehydrate. Uh, <laughs> before I go, I want to say if you're black, try to keep some of these police bullets out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have known that like the cell phone would do as much for black people in 2016 that Martin Luther King did in the 60s? It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> maybe even more, maybe even more. How many speeches? Just wanting that to do before one sale video. It's, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> do you think it's old cops, old racist cops reminiscing about the good old days? Like, man, do you remember you could shoot a black guy 18 times and just throw some drugs on him and be cool? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> and it's all come from racism, and racism is the most, race is the most insignificant, significant thing in society, because we're all the same. If you peel the skin back, we all look the same, right? <laughs> it's gonna be disgusting, but we're gonna look <laughs> And now, and my dick is still gonna be bigger than some of my white friends. <laughs> but we're gonna be identical. It's fucking retarded. Good imagination. Like, all the difference. All <laughs> <laughs> All the differences between the races can be explained if you look at it scientifically. Like, sir, you're white. Do you know why you're white? Here's my theory. White people are white because your ancestors are from Europe and they used to snow all the time up there. <laughs> and if a white dude was white enough, the wolves wouldn't see him when they're hunting. <laughs> boom, boom, bong, bong, evolution. <laughs> now, why are black people black? I think black people are black because we're from Africa and lions hunt at night. <laughs> so if a nigga was dark enough, the lions wouldn't see him when they're hunting. Boom, boom, bong, bong, evolution. <laughs> like, like most people believe that on average black men have bigger penises than white men. It's, it's not because God loves us more. Slavery proved that shit wrong. <laughs> because once again, white people are from Europe, and everybody knows cold weather does to a penis. It makes it more shrivel up high. <laughs> Thousands of years of that, it's little dicks from almost everybody. It's not your fault. <laughs> Black people on the other hand from Africa, and he makes shit expand, so he's down there being like, <laughs> 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 Little Fasa there, I'll answer my penis again. <laughs> Get the bug spray, motherfucker. This is my time, y'all. I'm Derek Thompson. Be good to yourself. Be good to yourself. Be good to yourself. Be good to yourself. Be Derek Thompson. Holy shit. I can't believe I admitted to my sidestep dance after the shower. If you sidestep this way and sidestep that way, your balls will be dry by the third day. I got a system. It's just embarrassing. It's embarrassing if I'm dancing in front of the mirror and my wife walks in. How do you explain that shit? No, I'm just saying, getting caught doing different things, you know what I'm saying? It's like, like, like being married it's fucked up. I, I try not to get caught being playing video games. No, it's true. It's weird. As soon as my wife hears the music from the PlayStation when you turn it on, that little ding 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 sound. You know what I'm talking about. You look like a nerd, yeah. Anyway, as soon as she hears that sound, it's magical. She remembers everything I need to fix in the fucking house. <laughs> Turn on the 
game and I put it down at the same volume that I listen to porn. <laughs> Can't get caught watching this shit. <laughs> oh, man. You guys ready for some more show? Yeah! All right. Now, I originally had four people for you tonight, but one of our comedians got, got, uh, got uh, caught in a crash, a car crash. No. He got caught up in, what was it, GWB? He got a crash? I think that's what he said on the text. He's okay, the car's fucked up. <laughs> so he's not gonna make it, but you know what? I'm making these motherfuckers work a little bit harder tonight, all right? So three out of four ain't bad. <laughs> all right, so you guys ready for the more show? Yeah! yeah. So Rich is okay, Rich Karuchi's okay. We're gonna bring him back on the future show. I'm gonna have to get him a bus ticket or something. All right. <laughs> All right, our next comic, he's a little bit sick. And he's also a Sikh, which makes him a successful comic. <laughs> Fuck you, I thought that was funny. Please welcome, Narinder Singh. Give for your host, guys, one more time, please. That was an amazing poetic introduction. Thank you, Hector, thank you. Guys, first of all, I'm single, and I usually get a woohoo by now. No, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Guys, I learned no one asks stranger questions than white girls on Tinder. Because one girl asked me if the color of their turban <laughs> She asked me if the color of their turban means fighting skill level. <laughs> and I said, thanks, but my body can't even handle a bouncy castle. Or a bouncy woman, for that matter. And I said, look, the color is just personal taste and brings out my swag, how you doing? <laughs> but I want to help people. So from now, I'm going to match the color of the turban with the color of the National Terror Alert System. <laughs> so pe people won't just fear me, They'll know exactly how much to fear me. <laughs> and my Sikh warrior fighting skills. Thank you very much. <laughs> guys, clap. Guys, clap if you were the high school prom queen or king. No one, just me, huh? <laughs> guys, in school, Kids saw me more than just a Sikh. They saw me as a fat Sikh. And it's tough when you look religious and fat. Because you look more fat somehow. Because you look more delusional and hopeless. And I mean that in a bad way. <laughs> and you know you're the fat kid. When a girl's teased by being married to you with, hey, Jenny, that's your husband, ha, 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 and another ha, because girls are generous and nurturing. <laughs> Guys, my mom invited my school bullies to my ninth birthday party. <laughs> Because keep your friends close. <laughs> and give your enemies your home location. <laughs> and to make it worse, my mom made me wear my Punjabi kurta dress. And the main word there is dress. 
Because <laughs> why feel like a bitch when you can look like one too? <laughs> When kids saw me in all my cultural glory, <laughs> one kid yelled, yo, this looks like Alibaba pajama. <laughs> which is also my Gmail password, by the way. <laughs> Guys, if no kids are born racist. How come no white kid has an imaginary interracial friend? <laughs> no white kid says, this is my BFF, Karanvir Patel of the Rajput province and Alibaba pajama, by the way. <laughs> Guys, a store clerk asked me, how about a dollar for child abuse? And I said, thanks, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> or just hug me tight. In fact, clap if your parents beat you. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. If you clap really loud, you probably deserved it, by the way. <laughs> but if you are what you eat, then I should be my father's hairy backhand. Because that's what I ate even for good grades. In fact, when student of the month, I hope to be rewarded like white parents give with money and ice hockey tickets. <laughs> and all I got was boom shaka. And I became the disabled student of the month. <laughs> <laughs> but worse than my dad dislocating my shoulder is white parents kissing you on the lips in public. <laughs> which is sexy as it sounds, by the way. <laughs> Because I would have yelled, yo, friend zone and boundaries, yo. <laughs> Guys, relationships are like eyebrows. They're beautiful when they space in between. All right, that was a great metaphor, by the way. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to leave you guys with this. What am I going to do? Hold on. I'm recovering from a cold, okay? That's why. <laughs> Guys, no one's more desperate than the guy in winter cat calling and shivering with yelling, hey, ma, ma. Because guys just want maternal love with a big butt. <laughs> but it's really awkward seeing a big black kid cat call my immigrant mother <laughs> with, you got the shiitake, mommy, and putang. <laughs> I had to translate to my 68-year-old mom because she left her urban dictionary at home. <laughs> and you can't make eye contact with a religious mom and explain putang, which is the worst show and tell ever. And I said, Mom, putang means Tuna panini. <laughs> and since he looked homeless, my mom gave him 20 cents and said, buy yourself some good putang <laughs> and share with family and friends. 
All right, guys, thank you so much, guys. How's everybody doing so far? Yeah. Everybody's having fun. Everybody's all wrapped up, having a good time. Mayor, how are you, sir? Still good? All right, that's good. Okay. The mayor's happy. I'm happy. You're happy? Wait, wait, wait. Our number one fan. You happy? I'm happy, pal. All right, then I'm happy. Fuck it, I'm going home. No, I'm just. Kidding. All right. Are you guys ready for your headliner? Are you guys ready for your headliner? In any comedy show, the headliner is the biggest star, the performer with the most credits. Here at Planet Comedy TV, it's the last guy to show up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, this guy's funny. This guy, I've had the pleasure. No, not you. Sit down. <laughs> I love it when our audience gets drunk. <laughs> and drink up, everybody. Drink up. And, and round of applause for Marie serving us drinks all night. Make sure you take care of Marie. If you don't take care of Marie, Marie takes care of you. I'm just <laughs> I had to say that. We're in a place where they film Goodfellas. All right. <laughs> all right. I've had the pleasure of working with this guy, and this guy has appeared all over the place. I can't even begin to tell you how many places I've seen this guy working at. And he finally made it here at Nears Tavern. All right. Freaking miraculous I got this freaking guy here at Nears Tavern. I'm just letting you know. In fact, I had him, I, I, I told him he was here for something totally different. I, I, I got him here, I, I told him I had a problem with, 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 my, with my Chevy and I, you know, he, he showed up with tools and everything. But <laughs> please welcome the very funny Mr. Johnny O. Going for Hector and all the other comics. All right, real quick. How many people were relieved as hell when the guy with the turban and the backpack turned out to be one of the comics? <laughs> when he walked up, I was I'm serious. That's scary. I'm so glad. And he was and he was funny too, because how bad would it have been if he bombed? <laughs> I, I thought somebody rubbed a lamp. <laughs> Can you work in the camera? Just show that door right there. This is a classic spot right here. This is the actual bar where they, in Goodfellas, remember? That's the sliding door. I'm, I'm freaking out, I love it. It's, it's crazy for me, I'm a huge fan. Oh, you don't have to stare at it the rest of, oh, you're watching her walk back to the seat. There's no paper trail in her, her shoes. Everything's fine. But I'm serious, this is the actual, I, I keep waiting to see, uh, you know, uh, stacks in the front, you know, talking and, uh, this is the actual bar. No one else cares, right? Is that it? No, we can't. No, I can't. You guys come here a lot? Is it, is it a regular place? Mm -hmm. This is really cool. I always thought that was a movie set. I can't believe this is the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So you're a good mix. Nice little group of people. Uh, a lot of good looking, healthy looking ladies. Ladies, a little advice for Johnny O. Take care of your breasts, all right? <laughs> Support them. Because gravity's out there. Today you're a 36 C, tomorrow you're a 42 long. So support your First you're J-Lo, then you're Jell-O. Look at the rack right here, God bless her. <laughs> Suddenly I want a dry bowl of cereal. I don't know what, no. I'm kidding, they're jokes, they're jokes. <laughs> what do we got here? We got a nice mix of people. We got any grandparents? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Wait, the lady, wait, you're a grandmother right there? Are you serious? Yes. Give her a hand. She doesn't look old enough to be a grandmother. Yeah. Her, 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 her 16 year old daughter got knocked up and you're clapping. Oh. What the hell's wrong with you? Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> Seriously, are they old enough to, do they, what do they, what do they call you? They call you grandma? Grandma, God bless you. That's the way it's supposed to be. Folks, there's two schools of grandparents. There's the ones with the guts to be called grandma and grandpa. Then there's chicken shits who want to be called Mimo, Nana, Pop Pop. My mom's the same way. She, I got, she's got seven grandkids. What do they call her and my dad? Nana and Pop. I said to my mom, seriously, how can the kids call you Nana instead of grandma? 
My mom says with a straight face, I think they have a hard time saying the word grandma. I was like, well, sure, because every time they try, you burn them with a cigarette. So. <laughs> now, listen, when you first heard about uh, uh, Bruce Jenner becoming, what's her name now? Court Caitlin. Caitlin. When you first heard that, didn't you think that he was going to have the full operation? You know what I mean? Because, you know, he kept his schmeckle. <laughs> There's a guy, his lifelong dream is to become a woman. He's an Olympic athlete. He's used to dedication and, you know, uh, sacrifice. And then he has the operation, but he keeps his schmeckle. <laughs> when I first heard that, I was excited because I thought, you know, it was going to be like Chaz Bono. I thought, you know, so I started writing jokes. I figured, oh, well, let's see. I figured, you know... Um, well, after the operation, he'll shave two to three seconds off his time in the high hurdles. Uh, he just signed a new contract with Revlon. Now that he's got two more lips to gloss. And I can't do any of them because he kept his speckle. The whole thing with the Kardashians, my wife watches that show. And uh, I, I, I should use this mic. Should I continue using this mic? I'm just as loud without this mic. Why am I using this mic? Okay, for the show. I'm sorry. This is like, this is like a tinfoil mic I'm supposed to use. Up here. I don't need the mic. I know I don't need the mic. Thank you. They always put the guy with Tourette's right in the middle of the room right there to help out the show. We're going to have a face-off later, you and me. We're both. We're the two loudest guys. I know. <laughs> Ster idi idiots in stereo, it will call it. <laughs> my wife watches the Kardashians, and the truth is, uh, what blows my mind is, uh, I peeked in the day when, when she married Kanye. She wore white. Kim Kardashian wore white. Kim Kardashian wearing white at a wedding is the equivalent of me going Overeaters Anonymous meeting wearing a lobster bib. It's just not being honest. <laughs> But her perfume is still number one in the country. Isn't that creepy? That's got to be a sign of the apocalypse. But no, if I, was, if I was a young girl, if I was a young girl, that's what I'd want to smell like. The daughter of OJ's bag man. The star of three bootleg porn videos. Her name of the perfume is Armenian Whore Juice. She said it's her second favorite thing to wear behind her ears. I'll wait. You know where the Kardashians had five turkeys on their Thanksgiving table? So the girls didn't fight over the dark meat. <laughs> Not a, is everybody laughing? Everybody's laughing, it's okay. <laughs> He's filming a show, see the camera? And they, they need it for that, I know, that, I, I know. Expl Hector, tell that guy why I have a mic in my hand. <laughs> then I go home, I, pre I pretend I work for uh, the, uh, the airport tower, and I yell at my wife with a mic, too, that doesn't work. I just stand there. <laughs> now you're all just staring at me like I'm a lifeguard at a Tommy Lee pool party. <laughs> See, I'm embarrassed because that guy still thinks I'm full of crap for having a microphone in my hand. <laughs> he does know there's a show, right? Okay. We're so close to it. We must have Met fans here, huh? I'm a Met fan. But you know what it is? When I was a little kid, you know, it was. I remember the first time I went to Yankee Stadium, I looked at it center field. It was Monument Park, right? Beautiful plaques and statues. And two weeks later on a Cub Scout, two weeks later on a Cub Scout trip, I went to Shea for the first time. I looked at a center field, there was Joe Pignatano's tomato plants. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing today. Go to Yankee Stadium, yell out uh, Carlos, you're cheering for Bayerga, right? Go to City Field, yell out Carlos, they start a wave in the bleachers. <laughs> See, there's a lot of Spanish at the Met games. That's all. <laughs> How do you think I met Hector? When the Mets play a doubleheader, you can't get a dishwasher in the metropolitan area. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Did you see the closing ceremonies for Yankee Stadium and Stadium? They were a week apart, if you remember. Yankee Stadium they had every living Hall of Famer, star-studded affair. A week later, they closed Shea. They had 45 ex-Mets representing 45 years. They had them line up on the third base side and the first base side, and they each took turns touching home plate for one last time. 
The problem is for some of them it was the first time. <laughs> But I put up another thing. Dwight Gooden, Daryl Strawberry, Keith Hernandez were all standing next to each other on the first base side. So it was good to see him share a line one last time. <laughs> so I finally did go to the new city field. Uh, it was uh, it was a giveaway. It was Michael J. Fox bobblehead doll night. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of these jokes are for me because I think they're funny. Even though as much a chance of getting a laugh at them as a kid in George did of finding his dog. Pippin! Pippin! Careful! Now, when you heard that Dick, see how I set myself up for this one. When you heard Dick Clark died, weren't you a little bit relieved that you didn't have to hear him do the countdown anymore? I don't wish death on anybody. But no one needed Dick Clark doing the countdown. Every Seriously, isn't New Year supposed to be out with the old man, in with the baby in the diapers, right? Nobody wanted an old man in diapers doing the countdown. <laughs> Every New Year's Eve, you'd be at a party, right? They turn down the, t the music and turn up the TV at like two minutes to 12, right? And then you would hear, you would hear Ryan Seacrest say, and now, ladies and gentlemen, an American institution, Dick Clark with the countdown. And then good old Dick Clark. 14, 9, February, I have to make. Thanks for the rock and eat, Dick. Hey, but Dick Clark was the man. Dick Clark was the man. Dick Clark, Dick Clark gave a whole new meaning to the phrase, stroke of midnight. <laughs> You're a good, you're a good group. You like clean jokes or dirty jokes? Here's a clean joke. Just to piss off the guy at the bar, because he's dumb. <laughs> so this couple, a uh, couple, a guy and a girl, they meet at a go-go, they meet at a go-go, but they meet at a, they meet at a, a meat market. It's a great bar. And they hit it off. They go back to her place. And uh, when they get to her uh, room in her apartment, it's wall-to-wall -wall shelves with stuffed animals. So they make love. Afterward, they're lying in bed. He says to her, so how was I? She said, you could take one from the box. <laughs> See, that's a Jersey joke. It's the boardwalk and... have pot smokers. Yeah. See, here's the deal with me and pot. When I smoke a little pot, I like to watch TV. I notice things that I wouldn't normally notice. You ever read the scroll at the bottom of the news shows that you never would have read before? <laughs> so I'm watching ESPN, and it says at the bottom, NASCAR legend Dick Trickle died today of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He was 73. And all I could think was, what took him so long? <laughs> if my name was Dick Trickle, I don't think I would have made it through high school without blowing my brain down. <laughs> so now I'm interested, you know? So I'm reading the obituary the next day. It says he leaves behind his Hawaiian wife of 40 years, Leaky, <laughs> who's been on suicide watch since their honeymoon. It said, in lieu of flowers, donations could be made to the Leaky Dick Trickle Scholarship Fund. <laughs> You're a good group. Right around now, a lot of you are just staring at the size of my head. I can sense that. You know what it is? When I was a little kid, I had a big head, and people would look at my dad, who's a pretty big dude, and they said, well, don't worry, he's gonna grow into it. What nobody told me was that as I grew, so would my head. <laughs> you know you have a big head when you sit down in the movie theater and you hear two rows behind you in unison go, shit. <laughs> or you go to try out a new barber and he gives you an estimate. <laughs> if 
By the way, you know what a priest and a barber have in common? They'll both give you a lollipop if you sat still. So that's <laughs> Here, boy, pip it! Pip it! Here, boy, pip! <laughs> Here's a cute joke. Uh, two nuns are getting raped. <laughs> one looks up at heaven and says, Forgive them, Lord, they know not what they do. The other nun said, This one does. All right. <laughs> Does anyone watch that crossing over with John Edwards? Anybody yeah. buying that? You watch that show, he's always, he's always reassuring the living. It's always, I see your dad, he says it's okay. Does that make sense to you? Just once I wanna see him read somebody. Sir, I see a woman behind you, I'm getting the letter P. Is your mom's name Pearl? Pearl says she wishes she never signed the power of attorney. She hopes you catch cancer of the balls and it spreads to your eyes. You thieving bastard. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> Anybody here work in an office? Do you ever always notice there's always that one girl in the office who has the reputation for like accidentally putting her breasts on guys? Right? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Some of, the, some of them are here tonight. Stop the poll. <laughs> you know, they come up and they act like they don't know it. And, and they nestle their puppies on your arm and, you know, and you try to be professional and... You're like, oh, okay, let's just get this purchasing order out. <laughs> Meanwhile, your right arm's going. <laughs> that never works for a girl, though. Imagine a guy's, imagine a girl's work, a guy, girl's working at a computer terminal. Guy comes up, nestles his sugar plums on her shoulder. <laughs> hey, listen, everybody's trying that new place for lunch. Are you in? <laughs> it doesn't work. I speak from experience. <laughs> We got Italian people? <laughs> I live in New Jersey. We have a, it's a nice mix of people. You know, you, I live in Parsippany. You know what that is? It's Morris County? You're from Elizabeth. You know, we could, I can listen to you talk all night and I feel like I have. <laughs> no, nah, he's a good guy. God bless you, Elizabeth. Sure. Oh my God. Let me guess. Are you are you Spanish? Come on, Spanish. Like Elizabeth, yes, yeah, something like that. Elizabeth is a wonderful area. I have a lot of friends that grew up there, and then they all got chased out because they were Irish. <laughs> <laughs> the neighborhood I'm in now, I think that you can tell, is a little bit Italian because uh, you count a lot of uh, Marys on the half shell on the lawn. Did you ever notice that? <laughs> You know the religious statues? I call, I call them the Mary on the half shell. I'll say that again. Okay, back to square one. The guy across the street from me is straight off the boat Italian, and he's got the Italian flag uh, on, his, on his front lawn. But the problem is it's faded, so it's really an Irish flag. And nobody's telling him, you know? <laughs> we got Irish? Oh, yeah. I See, they never clap, they want to put the drink down. <laughs> you know why Irish women can't parallel park? Because their husbands and boyfriends keep telling them this is six inches. So that's <laughs> right. Does anybody here use stick deodorant? I never understood stick deodorant. It's a lime scented candle you're wiping your pits with. I don't think it works. But did you ever go away and forget your deodorant? You have to borrow somebody's. They throw you their can of stick deodorant. That's always attractive, isn't it? You take the you take the lid off. It's got the stray black curly sticking to it. It looks like Paris Hilton's chapstick. There's nothing like a really good sound system, and there's nothing like one here tonight. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Real quick, just some quick impressions. Sharp looking black man right there with the Balboa shirt. Balboa, that's uh is that the soccer team? Or are you a Rocky fan? That's soccer team. No one caught that. Balboa, soccer, Rocky, okay. <laughs> one of my heroes, God rest his soul. 
Bernie Mac. Did you understand everything Bernie Mac said? Be honest. Did you understand? I asked all my black friends, and he said, he, he said he got about 85% of what Bernie Mac said. People talk about it. Be on the talk about it. Be on the talk about it. Kill them. I'm a sister kid. What's up? Go to the town and play the town up there. Pass on America. I'm burning my own play the town. I'm getting an applause break from the guy from Elizabeth. There we go. Real, I'll finish up the uh, Hector Giddy anyway. White. Quick impressions then. Okay, this is uh, this is Captain Zeta Jones on her honeymoon. Michael, take another one. Nothing's happening. <laughs> All right. This is my grandmother watching porn for the first time. I'll bet that girl in the middle got paid the most. <laughs> By the way, my wife is sitting over there and she's starting to get passive aggressive on me. And uh, <laughs> this, is the, this is the first time it started to happen. She waited till we had a party. We had mostly family over. And then she says to me in front of the whole family, by the way, why was the good olive oil next to the computer? <laughs> I, told, I, told, I told her a key was stuck. I think she it. All right, my favorite TV show was The Odd Couple. There's a remake now, but I heard it's bad. But my favorite was The Odd Couple. And here's a remake with my two favorite actors, Jesse the Body Ventura and Ice T. <laughs> Yo, Oscar, man, use a coaster, bitch. I just dust it. <laughs> Felix, are you mad at me? I saw a post it note on the refrigerator signed F you. <laughs> Oscar, man, why are you fronting? That's my initials, bitch. <laughs> Felix, you slack-jawed faggot. Let's just go downstairs and bang the pigeon sisters. You know, Oscar, I want to shoot you so bad my penis is hard. I have no ending to that. That's my... My name's Johnny O. I'll bring it back to Hector. Marinda Singh, Derek Thompson, and that really funny host, Hector Luis. <laughs> We're here every month at Nears Tavern. Check us out online, Planet Comedy. Uh, you can find me on HectorLuis.com. And uh, anyway, my name is Hector Luis. Thank you so much for watching Planet Comedy. Fuck off. Thank you so much.